Hello, everyone. Here is a story to get us started. The teacher was talking to her junior class about God and how hard it was to know about God. Where is God, the teacher asked. I know where God is, called out one little boy. He's in our bathroom. In the bathroom, the teacher replied. Yes, every morning my dad stomps up the stairs, raps on the bathroom door and yells, My God, are you still in there? Yes, God is in the bathroom because he's everywhere. Our happiness as human beings lies in acknowledging his existence and living by his commandments. The Old Testament tells us that at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Israelites fashioned a golden calf, called it God, and then worshipped it. This happened as Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments from the true God at the top of the mountain. Now the first of these commandments is, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have any strange gods before me. So, in obedience to the Lord, the golden calf, at the foot of Mount Sinai was smashed to smithereens, and rightly so. Now the question we could ask here is, are there any golden calves in our society which we need to smash? Life and death issues come to mind immediately. I was in Auschwitz in February where the infamous Dr. Mengele decided who could live or die. In fact, I was standing at the very gate where he stood. Now I'm told it's not unheard of these days for a doctor to ask an expectant mother if she wants to keep her baby. Now is this not playing God? Are we any different or that much different from Dr. Joseph Mengele? The next thing they'll be asking poorly elderly people is, do you want to die? We have ways of means of putting you asleep permanently. And don't forget that the right to die might very much become the duty to die. Another example of playing God. Often people put the blame on God as well, or religion, for all the wars and regional conflicts in the world. However, the breaking of God's first commandment is what causes wars, not God. And even natural disasters are often triggered by humans. Soil erosion, for instance, caused by deforestation, often results in fatal landslides. We have seen it, that happen last year. The first commandment requires us to be stewards of God's creation, not exploiters. But, of course, we ourselves can also invent a caricature of God and be swayed by it. One such caricature is what one spiritual writer calls the cuddly bear God. This is a sugar-coated God who is falling over himself to smooth out all the ruffles of our lives. This parody of God keeps us shielded from every pain and yet... How many people have found the true God only in the pain? How many people have turned their false gods, have turned from false gods only in the midst of a struggle? Jesus, in the Gospel, he asks us to take up our cross every day and follow him, not use religion as an escape hatch from facing up to life's problems. And don't forget in the second reading today, St. Paul says, Before we share in the glory of Christ, we must also share in his sufferings. No cuddly bear God there. I think the cuddly bear God is for room 101. The book of Genesis says that God made man in his own image and likeness. However, some among our contemporaries, they aim to refashion God into their own image and likeness. For instance, the health minister in Ireland, commenting a few days ago on the referendum, the recent referendum on abortion, he said, 
We'll sleep tonight in the hope of waking up to a country that is more compassionate, more caring and more respectful. But that is hypocritical. That's fashioning God into our own caricature image of him because the health minister is conveniently forgetting the fact that God's fifth commandment has been well and truly ridiculed. And you can't ridicule God. Best to let God be God and for us to recognise our creaturely dependence on him. Thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh.